about episode two of Wavy Physics. So today I want to talk about vehicle dynamics. Uh, touched on it last episode with the BMW uh, 235 racing, but today I want to get into a bit more detail about it. Firstly, uh, let's explain what vehicle dynamics is. Referring back to the the words vehicle dynamics, vehicle is obviously a clear one, and dynamics indicates there's something in motion. So when we put when we consider the term vehicle dynamics, we're referring to vehicles in motion. So an example of something related to vehicle dynamics, you're in a car on a racetrack, you're coming up to a turn, you turn the wheel, how does the car react? Vehicle dynamics dictates how the car reacts. Does it understeer, does it oversteer, is it nice and neutral and balanced? Today I'm in a McLaren 570S. Why I've chosen this car to demonstrate vehicle dynamics is that it's a supercar, firstly, and supercars pretty much in essence are designed and engineered in order to maximize vehicle dynamics. These cars are designed to generate the most amount of lateral grip, i.e. cornering force. So how do you maximize cornering force? The cornering of a car is largely dictated by two phenomena, lateral force equilibrium, which refers to the total amount of force that the car can provide in the cornering direction, so into the, the center of the corner. And secondly, we have the equations of moment equilibrium, which are concerned with how the car yaws uh, and how the moments generated at each end of the car influence its ability to yaw. How do the designers of a supercar maximize the lateral force it can generate? You have characteristics that are designed to get the most out of the car in terms of the moments that it generates and its ability to yaw. You want the, the all the mass of the car as close to the center of the wheelbase as possible. And this is to do with something called the polar moment of inertia. What you're trying to do there is minimize the polar moment of inertia. If, for example, you had a big heavy engine way up over the front wheels, the center of gravity shifts forward, and that means that the car then has to generate a large moment at the front relative to the rear. And given the fact that the front and rear tires have the same amount of grip, it's not possible. So that is why you, hit, you tend to hear the terms understeer related to a front engine car and oversteer related to a rear engine car. It's all to do with where the mass is along the wheelbase and therefore how large a moment that mass has relative to the center of rotation of the car. Whenever a force is applied to the center of gravity of the car, i.e. in cornering or straight line acceleration and braking, there's a weight transfer. Weight transfer is primarily influenced by the position of the center of gravity relative to the road surface. It's also influenced by wheelbase. A longer wheelbase will mean a, lot, a smaller weight transfer. And also, in the lateral sense, the track, the wider the track, the lower the weight transfer. Given the fact that you can't avoid it, a vehicle dynamicist then has to optimize the car's reaction to that weight transfer. In a longitudinal sense, so straight line braking and acceleration is not such a concern because it only affects the pitch of the car. However, in the lateral sense, it's quite an important phenomenon. If you get the calculations wrong you could actually have a rollover so as a car is in a steady state cornering situation the weight transfer is going to dictate how much of the vehicle's mass is transferred to the inside or outside wheel what you're trying to do is minimize that weight transfer to enable both tires to generate an equal amount of grip the full the force that the, the tire generates uh, to turn the car has a moment that acts between that point of generation the road surface and the center of gravity uh, and what that means is if the center of gravity is low, you minimize weight transfer and therefore you maximize the potential of each side of the car to generate grip. So then uh, we have suspension. So in terms of physics, you can describe the suspension of a car as a sprung mass system. What a vehicle dynamicist aim there is to tune that two degree of freedom sprung mass system to minimize the variation in contact pressure between the tire and the road surface. So it's a common misconception that you might want the hardest suspension on your car as possible. What you're actually trying to do here is provide the softest suspension that still gives you the required wheel control and the required body control. So for sure you want a suspension system that's supple enough that you absorb the energy that's given to it by the undulations in the road surface. But you also don't want a suspension system that's so stiff that it doesn't absorb the required amount of energy and therefore you lose the vertical force on the tire and your grip suffers as a result. So inevitably, as you go through a corner, a car's gonna roll, and a vehicle dynamicist, understanding that concept, then has to define the kinematics of the wheel. 
and as the wheel travels up and down, how does it affect the wheel geometry? And crucially, how does it keep the tire in the best position to generate the most amount of force it can? And that would be keeping the tire flat to the road surface. So a vehicle dynamicist will optimize every characteristic of the car in that respect. So we've got camber gain, static camber, static toe, bump steer, kingpin angle, caster, all things such as that. So focusing on tyres, anyone who watches any kind of car racing or is a car enthusiast is familiar with the concept that a softer compound it generates more grip. The way that is assessed by a vehicle dynamics engineer is with something called cornering stiffness. A softer tyre can generate uh, a higher cornering stiffness, which then enables the, that tyre to produce more grip. That is why you see performance tyres, soft tyres on supercars. That's an easy choice for a vehicle dynamicist. So everything I've talked about so far is pretty much concerned with steady state dynamics. But things also start to get quite interesting when you look at the transient scenarios. So let me define steady state and let me define transient. A steady state situation would be a car mid corner, the driver's completed the steering input, there's no acceleration or brake, it's just a constant lateral force generated. However, the transient situation is more important as it dictates how the car acts when you turn into the corner so on corner entry leading up to the apex and also on corner exit so you need to pay real close attention to things like how quickly you load up the tire which end of the car is loaded quicker how much momentum you give the body one of the most important things here is damper rates so it's important to remember that while the force that a spring generates is determined on the displacement of the spring like how much it's compressed the amount of force that a damper generates is directly proportional to the velocity in which it, the damper is compressed. So you don't want a damper that's too stiff in a transient situation because you then expect too much load from the tyre too quickly. Uh, but you don't want it too soft as it allows the body to gain too much momentum which then takes the tyre past its level of peak grip as before the car settled into a steady state situation. So not only is the damper required to keep the tyre in contact with the road with the maximum amount of force or so the minimum variation in force uh, possible, it also is required to uh, have the sufficient level of body control that the tyre is loaded in a constructive and productive way. So I've given you some insight into the theory of vehicle dynamics and what characteristics of the car uh, vehicle dynamics is trying to influence in their designs. Let's go out for a drive and I'll give some subjective assessments from the passenger seat as my friend drives. First impressions. The ride's stiff, but it's not overly stiff. And this relates back to what I was talking about. Stiffer is not always better, but no body roll. The powertrain's obviously savage. <laughs> they call this the baby McLaren, but like, there's nothing baby about it. It's absolutely savage. But we've got adjustable dampers on this, comfort sport and track. And the reason for that is <coughs> each road surface is going to require a different damping rate. The comfort setting is more aimed at just everyday driving, nothing too harsh, but dynamically it's not the best setting. So once you start getting into track conditions, then you're going to want to increase the damping rate. And this goes back to what I was saying about uh, keeping the average of the contact patch pressure as high as possible. Okay, so we're in comfort. What, how do you find track on roads like this? It's a bit too stiff. Too way too stiff. So it just gets a bit skinny. On country roads like this, I think yeah. the best setting is sport, which yeah. is probably what it's made for. Yeah. So because the car is quite low already, yeah. um, over kind of country roads where it can be a little bit bumpy, yeah. in comfort mode, it's sometimes just a little bit too soft, so you, it, it can bottom out. <laughs> Where yeah. sport, it just dials it up a notch and stops that. It stops you hitting the underneath of the car, yeah. and then it, it, it keeps obviously firmer, so it feels better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. 
got the Pilot Sport 2 cups on my RS4 and yeah again in the wet and the rain they're pretty savage <coughs> but when you get a bit of heat into them and the compound can soften up they generate so much more grip settings and uh, geometry that is optimum for performance you start getting things like the imperfections in the road being able to put a greater force into the steering system so you kind of get tugged around the road but me personally I don't mind that and if you're getting into race engineering some of the things you, you have to make compromises with the driver the optimum setup the speed versus something that the driver is comfortable with there's no point having the like getting every last tenth of a percent from the car if the driver is really like uncomfortable and even fearful to drive it. So to summarise, today we've covered some of the key characteristics in vehicle dynamics, such as centre of gravity location, spring and damper setup polar moments of inertia and the importance of bringing the mass to the center of the car, cornering stiffness which is influenced by your tire choice, suspension kinematics, weight transfer.